Hey everybody, I'm Sean. Welcome to another episode of Angling Spiders. Hey everybody, before we get to today's video, I did just want to take an opportunity to give you a quick channel update. For those of you that watch us regularly, you'll note that this video is dropping on a Wednesday. That is because we are behind a little bit on some content and we have a number of product reviews and shout outs and unboxings to do. And so we've decided to switch up our schedule a little bit. From now on, um, if we have a gear review to do or um, an unboxing or some uh, shout outs or some uh, mail drops, we are gonna do those on Wednesdays. Our fishing content will be on Saturdays. What we're gonna do is today, you're gonna see an episode of uh, the install of the new Humminbird Fish Finder. With any luck, you will see me using it on the Saturday. So that's kind of how it's gonna go going forward. And I uh, hope you guys like the schedule update and appreciate you guys continuing to follow us along. On today's episode, I am going to be unboxing and installing this new Hummingbird Piranha Max 40i fish finder. Uh, this is a gift that I got from work, which is pretty cool. And so I'm really excited because that means that both of our kayaks are gonna have a fish finder on them this year, which levels the playing field for Kieran because he has not had one uh, since we started the channel. Um, Admittedly, I'm going to take the new one just because it's got some new features that are not on our current fish finder, the Garmin Striker 4. So he's going to get the Garmin Striker 4. I'm going to get the Piranha Max. All right, let's go downstairs into the studio and unbox this thing. And then later on, we're going to get it installed on the kayak. Okay, so as I said, before we get to the install, I wanted to do an unboxing of this uh, Piranha Max 4DI uh, fish finder. So what I'm gonna do is I am gonna open up this box and tell you exactly what's inside. And then once we go through that, we'll get outside and put this thing on the kayak. All right, after some tough cutting into the packaging, <laughs> and these packages sometimes are interesting to get into. But anyway, I got into it. Uh, let's go through exactly what comes with the uh, Piranha Max 4DI from Hummingbird. All right, so I'm gonna pull this stuff out and we'll show you the components. All right, now that we got it open, let's go through the components that come in here. The first, of course, is the fish finder itself. Um, nice looking unit. And of course, it's got a protective film on here that we will take that off once we want to test it. On the back here, you've got uh, your, your place where you connect your power and your transducer. There's actually three places to plug in on the back of this one. I'm not sure exactly what all three of those are for because on the Garmin Striker 4, there's only two. Um, and then, of course, you've got your, your mounting bracket here for the holder. So uh, that's the unit itself. It's roughly the same size as the Garmin Striker 4, a little bit bigger, but uh, the functionality on the bottom here looks identical. So uh, we'll see how that goes once we get it installed. Next, we've got the cable, and there's two sets of cables. The first one is the power supply cable. And uh, you'll note here that on the ends, they need to be fitted out with the connectors. Uh, this was very similar again to the Garmin Striker 4. And so we used um, battery connectors, which I will show you installing again. And then we put some heat shrink protectors on there just to make sure that everything was secure. So there's the first thing. We've got the power uh, connection to the power supply. And then of course, the second thing is the transducer cable with the transducer on the end of it. This one is quite a bit bigger than the Garmin Striker 4 and that may be because that this is uh, the DI version and so it's got some capabilities that that, that uh, model doesn't have for, uh, for Garmin. Um, but what uh, we will have to pick up and we don't have yet is a transducer arm mount. So this does not come with one and we will be getting the same one that we had for our Garmin Striker 4. That is the Scotty Kayak Transducer Arm. Uh, I'll make sure that there's a link to that down below for those of you who haven't seen it. Uh, it works really well and I'm pretty sure that it's going to work with this model also. So I have to pick one of those up. Next up is the base for the unit. This is what holds the, uh, the unit onto the kayak. So you've got the flush mount that goes onto the kayak itself. And then you've got the base that snaps into that. And uh, 
This one is pretty tight. Uh, I won't connect it right now, but it does it does um, turn, but it's a pretty tight turn in there, which I guess is good because you don't want it moving all the time. Um, we are going to mount this in the same location that we mounted the base unit for our Garmin Striker 4. One difference with this unit, um, on the Garmin Striker 4, this piece that attaches to the unit comes off. So the only thing left on your kayak with the Garmin Striker 4 is this little base unit. You cannot do that on this one. In this one, you put this into this base. And then there's a ring that attaches underneath here that secures that ring in place so that it doesn't come off. And then you fix this entire thing to your kayak. So this whole thing is going to be on your kayak, which means these are going to be sticking up. And uh, that concerns me a little bit from the potential for breakage, but uh, we'll have to see how that goes. So um, that's very different from the Garmin Striker 4. And one thing I prefer about the, the Garmin over this Hummingbird model. But we'll see after I get it installed. Next up, we've got this uh, screw that's used to attach the fish finder itself to this unit. So you can see it fits in there. You just tighten that up, you put the fish finder on, the arm goes right through and you can attach it. And then lastly, of course, we've got our installation and instruction manuals and all of the necessary documentation that goes along with it. So. Everything is in here that you're going to need to install this thing on your kayak with the exception if you're using um, a transducer arm mount, you're going to need to pick that up separately. Um, other than that, we are good to go. So let's get to the installation. All right, so we're in the backyard. We've got the kayak ready to go. We've got all the parts that we need. Um, I will say that I did get the transducer mount. It arrived, uh, ordered it through Amazon. As I said before, this is the same transducer mount as the one we have on our other kayak for the Garmin, Garmin Striker 4. Um, this one is going to be a little bit more challenging to attach the transducer to. And so I'm going to show you guys a close up of that because um, it's not quite as easy to attach the Humminbird transducer to this as it was for the Garmin Striker 4. I'm going to make it work, but it's going to require a little bit of uh, fiddling to make sure that it's going to work uh, correctly. So. I'll show you that next. All right, so what I've done is I've laid the parts out here on my uh, patio table and uh, hopefully the glare isn't too bad, but uh, we've got the transducer for the Humminbird here. And on this side, we've got the Scotty um, transducer arm mount. And um, one of the things about the Humminbird is that it does not have any kind of bracket on it. And so the Scotty transducer arm mount cannot surround this uh, like it did for the uh, Garmin and so what I have to do is basically do a side-by-side -side. so this is what it's going to look like I'm going to have to attach it through both the Scotty arm mount and then through the other side of the uh, Humminbird mount um, the Humminbird does come with a couple of these locking nuts to make it a little smoother so I'm going to put one of those in there and then I also picked up some rubber washers and uh, I'm going to put those on either side of the unit just to make sure that uh, there's a tight seal. And then I had to pick up a bolt. And in this case, I picked up a uh, quarter inch bolt. Uh, this one's two inches long and I'm going to put it right through everything and cinch it up. So that's what I'm going to show you next. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is install the fish finder mount here. I've got inch long screws and uh, I'm just going to install it, but uh, and I test fit them all. But the next thing that I want to do is put a bead of ring grade silicone around those screw holes just to seal it off from up here so that if water's up on the deck, it's not going through into that area. So I'm just going to put a bead, then put the bolts through. Just make sure that I can actually get a nut on there, which I, which I can on all those, and uh, that'll be installed. So that's my next step, and uh, that one's pretty easy to do. Uh, again, this is going to stay on here, and so I'm a little bit concerned about that because these could break if they get bumped, but it is what it is. That's how this version works.
Okay, there we go. We've got the uh, mount for the uh, Hummingbird Fish Finder installed. And uh, next up is to test out the unit, make sure that it's going to fit on here. And so I will grab it and show you how to put it on. Okay, so it's pretty simple. You just slide it in here. It is a little tight. And you get your mounting knobs, slide them through, and uh, tighten it up. Well, there we go. All right, next up is to get the transducer arm mount on so that uh, we can hook this thing up and give it uh, a test. Okay, everybody, before I put the Scotty transducer arm mount on, a couple of things that you should be aware of. First off, on the base itself that attaches to the kayak, there is an arrow that tells you which part should be inboard. That's so that the button to release it is on the inside of the kayak. It's much easier if that's there. So you want to make sure you're looking for that. The second piece is you should thing that you should do is always test fit it. So get it in there, then put it where you think you're going to have it and make sure that everything is working and the transducer is going to be in the water where you want it. And so um, I am putting this one exactly where we have the transducer for the Garmin and so it's going to work exactly the same for this one and so right behind this uh, grommet here on the side wall is where I'm going to mount this one so I'll drill those holes next all right so it took me a minute to get the nuts on uh, a little bit of a pain here given the angle of the plastic on the kayak and so getting the nuts onto the end of the bolts was a little bit challenging once you do that piece of cake just got to tighten them up Okay, so I have got the base installed for the transducer arm. I've got the base installed for the fish finder. Last thing I'm going to do here is run a bead of marine grade silicone around the outside just to keep, again, the water from going in there and going through the holes that I drilled. That would put that water into the kayak. And then the last thing we have to do is wire up the power supply. And for that, I need to put some ends on the wires so that it can connect to the battery. And then we're ready to test this thing out. All right, everybody, the last step here is to take this wire, which is the power cable for the fish finder unit, and get some ends on it so that we can attach these wires to these battery posts. Now, these battery posts are the male end type, and so I had to get some female disconnects. And uh, the last time I did this, I used some that had shrink wrap. I don't know if you need it, but one thing I would highly recommend is getting uh, two colors. So in this case, I've got blue and red. And that's because you want the red one on your red wire and you can put the blue one on your black wire and you can easily determine which of the posts you need to attach your wires to. So that's the next thing I'm gonna do is crimp these on and uh, we'll be ready to go. Uh, just before I do it, one thing to mention on these is make sure you know the size of the crimper that you need for the ends that you're putting on. So in this case, the, the female connectors are 1614. And so if you've got a crimping tool like this wire crimping tool, you're going to use this blue crimping dot 1614 on the end to crimp your wire. It's pretty simple. You just slide it on. Make sure that it's in there. Make sure that it's in there nice and, and seated well. And you take your crimper, and as I said, you put in the right one, in this case 1614, and you crimp it. Now that shouldn't pull out anymore. That should be seated in there. And uh, I like to crimp it in a couple spots. All right, so we've got the ends attached and crimped on there. And now, in order to connect these, you just slide them on to the appropriate terminal. And this thing is ready to be plugged in and be tested. All right, so we got everything installed. Took about 20 minutes from start to finish. Um, Typically, I leave this uh, transducer cable coiled up and then I put my rod holder here and that's what holds it in place. I still have to zip tie the 
remainder of this cord to the uh, transducer arm just so that stays in place and so I will do that just a couple of zip ties onto the arm the arm is installed and working good we can lift up the transducer and uh, put it back down when we want to be fishing tighten that up and we got our connectors installed for the battery and so all I need to do now is plug in the power and hopefully this thing's going to start <laughs> Uh, of course, we're not going to see anything because it's not in water, but hopefully it's going to power on and we'll know that everything is working the way it's supposed to be. And there we go. So it's not picking anything up, but we've got power. We can go to the menu, set for down imaging. And so uh, everything appears to be working. Fantastic. Next step is to get this thing out in the water and try it out and make sure that it's functioning properly. And that's gonna be next for me. Uh, so you can look forward to that. I hope you guys like this unboxing and install. And if you did, remember guys, uh, if you liked the video, smash that like button, hit subscribe. And until next time, good fishing.